Welcome, welcome, and this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters, actually Jot and Tittle Vintage Typewriters, and glad to have you with us today. We are going to do a tutorial on an Electra 110 from the 1970s. So um, the reason I can kind of tell what decade it's in is because of the front plate. This has kind of the, the gold and silver metallic speckle uh, look to it. Um, very handsome front plate. The 60s kind of has a solid black front plate to it. And I'm sure there's a little bit of bleed in some of the dates, but um, there is not an accurate, uh, I mean, there's a really good database out there, but they just don't have um, the data to be able to determine the dates on these typewriters. And so you can still look up your serial number if you want. And to find your serial number, it's going to be right here on the side, kind of stamped in. It's always going to be stamped into the frame somewhere. Um, but on these electrics, they're underneath. So if you want to see how it types, um, you can look, you can either search on our YouTube channel for Electra 110 and see other videos that I do more typing demonstrations of. Now my typing demos are unlisted. Uh, so if you wanna see them, you just need to click on the product listing below and then you can get access to that demo video. And also photos of this if you want um, to see that. Okay, so let's get started and um, take a look at how to use one of these fantastic machines. You do need to plug it in. No batteries or chargers allowed on this, it doesn't work. All right, it has a manual return. And right here you'll see your paper holder, your margins, just press and drag, okay. Um, to move, the, this is called your carriage. To move your carriage, there's a lever, lever on the right and on the left. You just pull it in, doesn't matter which one. And the carriage is automatically gonna pull to the left because it has a draw band in there with a lot of tension. And uh, so when you pull that in, you might be like, whoa, that pulls really hard. It's supposed to. If you get a typewriter and you release your carriage and it doesn't pull to the left and it's kind of flopping back and forth, you have a broken draw band and you need to take it to a repair person. Okay. Right here is a paper release and I'm gonna show you right now what that is for. So you just put a piece of paper in there and it's gonna go right in between these two metal pieces. You don't need to shove it in there. You just set it, turn the handle. I like to come all the way up to make sure it's even and mine's actually even, but if it was uneven, Use pull this paper release forward. Move your paper around till you get it nice and even. And then re-engage and voila. And you also use the paper release when you're done. You just release, pull that forward and pull your paper out. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't remember. All right, on the left side is your line selector and you'll see a one, one and a half and a two on your typewriter. That means when you hit your return handle, it's gonna advance either one line, one and a half lines or two lines. However, you have that selected, okay? Um, there are some other little levers, but you don't need to know them unless you're gonna learn how to repair typewriters and that is not what this, type, what this video is for. And I don't know myself because I don't repair typewriters. My husband does. Okay, on the left side is a button. You'll notice it's not on the right side. So look at these handles and you'll see, hey, there's this black thing sticking out. That's actually a button. And what that is for, the best way to, is to show you. It releases your roller, which is also called the platen. And um, so let's say you're trying to line up something. So like if I wanted to keep typing on this line, it's kind of off. And when you turn the handle, it's gonna advance a half a line. But 
to get it to line up just right, so like it just doing this, I'm not gonna get it to line up just right. But if I press this button and turn at the same time, uh-huh, I can line it up just right. And there you go. Okay, I'm gonna move the carriage to the left, open up the top and the side. You're gonna see these lovely ribbons. This is a universal ribbon, and you can use a universal ribbon on your typewriter, and they're very easy to find. Um, you can find them on our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com and you'll find a link to our shop and just look for the ribbons if you need one. Now, if you have the original spools to yours and you want fresh ribbon on it, we have an option on there for you as well. It's called Custom Ribbons. Just click on that and follow the instructions. Okay, when it's time to change out your ribbon, make sure black is on top, red is on bottom. You pull this out like this, just like that, to change it out, same with the other side, and then just pull it out of all the little guide wires and then make sure you put the new one back in exactly the same way. Now, if yours came without a ribbon and you're like, what, how is it, how is it threaded through there? You are in luck. If you click on that product listing link below, it'll take you to the photos of this typewriter and it has a photograph of this area up close and you can reference that so you know how to thread it through. Keep in mind that when you're threading your ribbon, sometimes you have to go behind, through, underneath, you know, so kind of pay attention um, about how, so you can get that in there just right and you will get your hands all dirty. Okay, when you get to the end of the ribbon, it is not the end of the ink. These ribbons will last you a long time if you need to manually reverse it. It's right here, it says rib, rev, and you just flip it and you can reverse this baby like 50 times before you need to replace it. Okay, over here is your color selector. There's black and red. And we talked about ribbon reversal. This is gonna be your uh, backspace and your margin release. And we will uh, show you that here right now. So the margin really, so I'm gonna turn, here's your power switch. Turn that on. So your backspace, it does not erase, but it does backspace so you can type over your mistakes, okay? And oh, there we go. Now it's lined up. Okay, and for your margin release, testing the, Margin. Okay, you heard that bell. So that bell was saying, hey, you're at the end of your margin. Testing the margin release. And it's all, it's stopped on me. So you just hit MR. See how it, that one, this one happened to jump forward. Sometimes it does that. So I'm gonna have to backspace a little bit. There we go. But I can keep typing because of my margin release. But really, when your bell goes off, that means you need to hit your return handle and go to the next space. Okay, so for tabs, let me show you how to set them. So here's your tab. I've got one set, I'm gonna hit clear, and that should clear the tab, which it did. And then to set, you do the same thing. Set, and there you go. One thing about electric typewriters is please I highly recommend don't put anything around the carriage area because sometimes the tab doesn't catch and when you hit that tab button, that carriage is gonna go flying and will break your mug. Um, or you're typing along and you're all happy and you're doing great and you hit that, you know, you're, and you go to hit your return handle and you go fling and then your, your coffee's right there and there it goes. Okay, so that's just uh, experiential word of warning there for you. Okay, space bar, power space. There are three keys with an auto repeat on an Electra 110, and that's your dash, your period, and your X. Voila, now you know how to use your Electra 110 from the 70s. All right, hope you liked it. Give us a thumbs up, hang out with us, Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we like to get to know our Typosphere people um, on those channels. They're lots of fun. All right, y'all have a blessed day.